The following video demonstrates how we are going to use the brake line extraction tools new to Enforce 4.3 to try and pull out bottom of batter and top of batter from a point cloud. This is our first attempt and will be improved in due course. First of all, I need to create a new model for the data. So I'm going to go models new and we'll call this one raw brake lines. And I'm then going to go into the 3D viewer. And I'm going to start by importing the data that I want to use for the point cloud. Okay. Right, so for us to extract brake lines, we first of all need triangles. So I'm going to use the gridding tools to drape a 250 mil grid over the site by using the lowest levels, and it will find the lowest level within 150, with 100 mil of that grid interval when I hit preview. Okay, so there's the preview of my surface, so I'm happy with that. So I'm going to hit create grid, and just to make life easier, I'll call that one grid DTM. Hit OK. Right, so I can remove the point cloud now. Here I have the surface that I've just extracted, and what I'm going to do first of all is change its shading to gradient shaded and then turn that in turn into a, a geo-referenced image because then I can use that in a minute to fill in the blanks or fill in the grey areas where the extraction routines didn't help or, or rather generated no data or didn't generate the right data. So I'm going to go to Tools and I'm just going to do a quick 8K image. So now I've generated my image, I'm going to go to the Feature Extraction tool. And the first stage is to simplify the data set. Okay? If we don't simplify the data set, we generally don't get the edge uh, boundaries that we need. And what we're looking to do is to try and exaggerate the edge boundaries to make it easier to pull out that information. So here, unfortunately, we have to uh, get a bit mathematical. Um, the first tolerance here is essentially specifying the gradient or rather the slope that we're going to try and pull out. Now we are actually measuring this angle against the vertical. Okay, So where it says 80 degrees there, that basically means a 10% or 10 degree slope from the horizontal. We have to use the vertical because when it comes to actually looking at triangles and the angles between triangles, we can't just assume a vertical or rather a flat triangle, otherwise you wouldn't be able to pull um, brake lines out of access roads like you see here because they're not flat so what we're actually looking for is the angle between triangles okay so this is the <coughs> this is working out from the vertical the angle between the triangles so essentially it's a 10% uh, incline from a triangle which is considered to be flat triangles that are considered to be flat are controlled by this tolerance here this vertical angle tolerance okay so Every triangle has what's called a normal, which is perpendicular to the face of that triangle. And what we're doing is we're comparing the normal to a completely vertical um, line, and that's the difference between the vertical line and the normal. Okay, so the smaller that number, the more horizontal the triangle. And the larger that value, the more triangles will be considered for the algorithm. So that specifies essentially a bottom of bank tolerance and this one here specifies the top of bank tolerance so what we're setting here is the total angle from the vertical round to the slope okay so what we're saying is it's essentially that this is 10 degrees past horizontal i.e. 100 not 90 uh, when it comes to joining the strings that's the, the, the maximum tolerance between the ends of the lines it will, it will join in horizontal distances and that's the vertical difference between points that it will join. Quite often when you do this we get uh, all sorts of lines zigzagging all over the place because we're essentially we're looking at the angles between triangles and they can uh, go off in all sorts of funny directions. So we're trying to build in some tools here that allow us to specify a zigzag tolerance which is basically a line coming back on itself immediately. That's that number there and you've got the, the corner angle as well. And what we're doing is basically from a mixture of setting the corner angles and the zigzag angles we're basically saying that 20% of the line here must have 
angles less than these two. In other words, that tries to clear out the zigzaggy lines that make a bit of a mess of it. Uh, I've already spoken about the vertical angle tolerance, essentially just specifying how um, flat the triangles are. And then we have the simplification value here. Okay, so I'm going to press simplify. Okay, and that gives me this surface, which is a simplified representation of the original using 10% of the original faces. Okay, so this number will vary depending on how large your job is, but you generally need to simplify it enough so that we start to get this decent um, change of change of angle as opposed to a graduated one when you have essentially got the full data set to play with. So I'm going to minimize that section so I don't accidentally press it and just see how this plays out. So I'm going to hit extract break lines. Okay, so if we have a look around the job, you can see that some edges have been missed. That's probably due to filtering. Okay. Sections here have been missed. Okay, and what you need to do is change the values to to see what happens effectively. So I'm going to up this ratio here to try and get it to give me more data. I'll put 50 in there and then just hit extract break lines again. And there you go. So now less filtering has occurred and it's 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 kept more of the line work for me there. Okay. So that's not worked too badly. You can see what I mean where you get lots of triangles on top of each other. Uh, funny angles you get this kind of mess. But on the whole it's not done too badly. The algorithm is going to be improved with time. Uh, we've got lots of ideas what we can do to improve it, but this is our first attempt. So I wanted to get it out um, and used, and then we'll improve it from then on. So I'm going to I'm going to stick with that. So I'm going to do is I'm going to say give it a code. So for the time being, I'll give everything the code BB and just hit commit, and that now gets pushed back into the model. If I right-click that, you can now see my um, bottom of batter lines now in the magenta in the magenta line work there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the 3d view down zoom to extents in here and you can see we've got the gridded DTM in the background so I'm just going to use alt B and I'm going to remove the grid DTM I don't want that for the time being I'll leave the image in there though okay and if I use this button over here I can very quickly see what it is I want to keep um, so, obviously there's some line work to tidy up, I'm just going to do Alt F9 for the time being, untick, um, I'll leave markers on, I'll turn off the heights, I'll go to the points menu, come down to delete, indicate, in rectangle, Let's get rid of that one, that one, that one, do some line deleting on those actually, okay. Okay, and I'm actually doing this in in um, in the kind of the raw model. What I can actually do though is do that in a subsequent model, and then actually pull through what it is I want to keep. So that will give me sort of uh, a need to model in the day because I won't have everything else in here. So I'm going to close this view down, go to models, do new normal, and I'll call this one final output. Back cloth that with the raw break lines and I'm going to change their colour so they're darkened, darker sorry, so that I can tell what it is I copy through and also put the raw image in there. So now I can go to the lines menu and I'm going to come down to copy from the back cloth. If I click that one, that comes through. Okay, so that's come through, that's come through, that's come through, bring that one through, bring that one through bring that one through okay now there's places obviously where I need to infill so I'm going to go points come down to insert use the same code BB and I'm going to interpolate onto the gridded model so now I can come across here
LM copy that one turn off the back loss and then use the pointers to delete got some infilling to do here back to the points insert start joining some lines. I'm just going to repeat the process for the second spoil heap, but I'm just going to fast forward so that um, we can carry on and see how it matches the point cloud. It's exactly the same process, but there's, so there's no need to, to sit back and watch me repeat that. Okay, so I'm going to test this in the uh, in the 3D view. First of all, I'm just going to remove the raw lines from the back cloth. And then if I go to 3D view, I won't get those in there as well. So there's, there's just those two lines. So if I can now go to the point cloud, load that in. Do always visible. It's a pretty good fit, I hope. Thank you for watching, and that concludes this video.